What's up, everybody? I wanted to review my debate with vegan gains. But before I get into that, I think I really need to address the vegan horde that has come to my channel after the debate. Calling me all kinds of names, attacking me verbally, viciously, talking about my mother, all kinds of nasty stuff. Zero arguments, not one argument. Just calling me names, attacking me, talking about my mother. Ethical vegans. Huh? Understand who you're dealing with. Seriously. So, have fun you guys. Downvoting the video. But I have a question for you. If vegan gains are... Uh, wipe the floor with me and there were a lot of very nasty homosexual remarks lots lots of talk about rape and anal rape and eh, what are you gonna do ethical vegans anyway if vegan gains wipe the floor with me why are you guys so angry <laughs> Why don't you have any arguments? He sure didn't. Neither do you. Oh, and, and, and me saying that humans aren't animals. If you don't understand the meaning of that sentence in the context that it was used, God have mercy on your soul. If, if these are the kind of uh, arguments you high priests are over there commiserating, using, then they must be real desperate. And what's up with uh, vegan gains? And even ask yourself, the guy that didn't want to debate me was deathly afraid to debate me. Why? Well, because he didn't want the embarrassment that vegan gains had to deal with. That's why. What, what's up with all these guys seconds after... Uh, the debate is over, going full damage control and making their videos, making sure the minions know exactly what happened. And speaking of the minions, once again, Vegan Gaines could get on the mic in a debate or for two hours say nothing but Matt Damon. And you clowns are going to think he's a schooling, whoever he's talking to. And the other person is, well... I shudder at even thinking about some of the words and phrases you guys were using on my channel. Ethical vegans. You have to understand, guys, who you're dealing with here. These people are not who they say they are. Some are. The real ethical vegans are, you know, few and far between. And, well, they're nice people. They're ethical people. <laughs> oh, veganism is so easy to debunk. It's impossible to convince these ethical vegans, but that's never the point of these debates. I hope you guys understand that. I'm fully cognizant of this fact. These clapping seals, all they need to hear from their high priest is Matt Damon. Anyway, moving right along, let's talk about the actual debate. I feel very good uh, about the debate. I have to say, toward the end, I got triggered. I lost my cool because I was completely disrespected, and I wasn't about to have that. No, 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 no. You are not disrespecting me, all right? So, I snapped, and... I basically told your boy to kick rocks, but we'll get to that. I feel very good about the debate because I basically accomplished everything I set out to accomplish. Vegan Gaiden surely did not. 
His goal was to right off the bat talk about name the trait and expose me as somebody who is logically inconsistent. So what did I do? Well, I flipped the script on him. I took control of the debate right away. You have to do this with someone like Vegan Gaines, a control freak. And you got to do it early because later on, as he's done with many debates, he's just going to shout you down because he can't win otherwise, right? He's not smart enough. Well, maybe he's an intelligent guy. I didn't get that impression, but he doesn't have... The ammunition, the kid is shooting blanks, basically. Anyway, so I figured if I just expose him as logically inconsistent, well, if he thinks that that's how he wins the debate, then if I do it right off the bat before he even has a chance, and I never even gave him a chance to do that, well, then I win the debate, obviously, right? By the standard that he set. See how that works? So... The first inconsistency I pointed out is how, you know, he made this video talking about how the carnivore diet can lead to vitamin C deficiency, which leads or manifests itself as a disease known as scurvy. And that makes perfect sense. That's very much logical. If indeed all of that is true, that's a good argument to make. But following that logic, and it is logical, because he takes all kinds of supplements himself. He believes his diet causes nutritional deficiencies. And with all of those nutritional deficiencies come diseases. So in order to prevent these diseases, he takes pharmaceuticals. So he believes veganism causes disease, right? You have to be logically consistent. And I forced him. I mean, it was like pulling teeth, but I finally forced him to admit this. Right. But he's still logically inconsistent because before, even though he makes these statements about the carnivore diet before our debate, and I'm sure he's going to go back to doing this, he pushes veganism as, well, the healthiest diet on the planet. Right. When, according to logic that he likes to use against the carnivore, it causes disease. <laughs> so... I mean, he got completely exposed right off the bat as a clown, someone who's logically inconsistent. And again, if your goal of winning a debate is to prove I'm logically inconsistent and I do that to you, then would it just happen, right? According to your own standard, would it just happen? Exactly. So, oh, and there were some people who asked me why I didn't want to debate them about nutrition. And my answer was, that's a five-minute debate. I'm going to win easily. And that's exactly how you win it. You get him to admit that his diet causes disease because that is what he believes. Right? Nutritional debate over. Like I told you, easy. Five minutes. Done. I got vegan gains to admit that his diet that he's been pushing as the healthiest diet on the planet causes disease, if not in so many words. But I lost the debate. <laughs> Matt Damon. The second inconsistency was um, well, his idea that morality is inherently subjective, but at the same time he pushes an objective moral standard. And because most of his viewers are kids and most people today unfortunately never took a logics class let me explain to you what it means when you say morality is subjective if this is a worldview that you want to commit to there are certain consequences that come with that that you just cannot shed because it's convenient if you say morality is subjective Whatever I think is moral is just as legitimate as whatever you think is moral. Because morality is subjective, there are no objective moral standards. It's really that simple. You cannot tell me that I'm wrong or immoral in that context because you believe morality is subjective. Your morality is legit. My morality is legit. Everybody's morality is legit because morality, inherently, the nature of morality is subjective. It's really that simple. And the reason why a lot of people don't understand this basic concept is because, well, they're just not logical. They're emotional creatures.
who don't know what logic is, unfortunately. And if you don't know what logic is, you're never going to be able to speak the truth, except probably accidentally, or when it's something mundane and, you know, uh, matter of fact and obvious. But the deeper truths in life will always elude you. Anyway, so if you're saying morality is subjective, you cannot at the same time say that people are mean or bad or evil. You cannot use these moral terms to describe people who eat meat because then you're pushing an objective moral standard, which you don't believe exists, right? And because he does both things, believes morality is subjective, and then judges people who disagree with him, meat eaters, well, he's inconsistent, incoherent, and logically, the kid is, you know, he doesn't make any sense. He's logically inconsistent. So that was another logical inconsistency I pointed out in his behavior. Now, for the sake of debate, he the debate, he tried to be pragmatic and talk about utilitarianism, how he's not pushing a moral, objective moral standard, he's just trying to be a utilitarian and, you know, he wants the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. Well, that's all fine and good, maybe, but that doesn't erase the fact that you push an objective moral standard as well by judging people and once again saying that they're immoral and bad people. So, you know, for the sake of the debate, he basically lied about his behavior or he didn't want to acknowledge that this behavior exists and started talking about utilitarianism now look if you think morality is subjective uh i'm not sure yeah you could push this idea of the greatest good for the greatest amount of people but you know i'm part of those people and if my view of morality differs from yours it's just as legit You have to respect it. I'm not sure how you rectify, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm not sure how you rectify utilitarianism and with subjective morality, right? I mean, I I suppose you could push this idea of the greatest good for the greatest amount of people, but, you know, you still have to prove, you still have to back your assertions with facts and you have to be right. That's first and foremost. And secondly, that has nothing to do with morality. That's just util- that's just utilitarianism. It's not related to morality. Now, maybe if you think morality is objective, you could tie that into utilitarianism. Uh, but they're two separate things anyway. So while I was talking about morality and, you know, the debate was about ethics, he all of a sudden wanted to talk about utilitarianism, which does not follow from what I'm talking about, right? So he wasn't addressing what I said. He was dodging the question. And point blank, period, he's inconsistent because he pushes an objective moral standard while believing morality is subjective. That's just not debatable. He does that. He just, so here was another, yet another Uh, logical inconsistency so in the first you know opening stanzas of the debate I gave you two examples of how he's logically inconsistent which is which was his entire goal so how did I lose the debate Uh, that's why you guys are so angry calling me names talking about my mother and you don't have any arguments to present because your high priest didn't have any either where else would you get ideas from you're clapping seals you don't have any of your own what was next oh obviously he wanted to talk about name the trait which I I told him is the fallacy of the single cause I don't Look, if you think your test is legit and you want to put me to the test, I'm telling you, and I back my points with logic, that it's the fallacy of the single cause. You're saying that sentience, this one little aspect of humanity or what it means to be an animal, I suppose, is responsible, is directly linked to our right to life and liberty and thus the animal's right to life and liberty and i know he was playing semantics with me but that's essentially 
what this is. I mean, it, he said in the beginning that name the trait is a logical extension of human rights to animals. So obviously, I was correct in saying that, but because he was losing so badly, he was just nitpicking, you know, semantics in order to try to make himself look like he was actually saying something when <laughs> he was just trying to regain control by telling me how to talk, how to speak, right? Because he lost control. He completely lost the debate right off the bat. Uh, and he thought, he thinks that by, because he's a control freak, that by controlling people uh, and disrespecting people, he can uh, somehow win the debate. And that's nonsense. That's not how you win a debate. So, obviously, our human rights... And it's a basket of our these rights, our human moral value. Well, it comes from the fact that we're human, right? They're not called sentience rights. They're not called intelligence rights. It's not like each one of our traits is connected to a specific right, which is what he's arguing with this sentience nonsense, right? Fallacy of the single cause. The reason why we have human rights is because of the basket of traits that makes us human, Duh. So, that was my argument, why it's a uh, name the trade as a fallacy of the single cause. And since that's a strong argument, uh, and I don't, I'm not buying your syllogism, your trick, your little name the trait method of trying to show how people are logically inconsistent, you have to prove to me that the test is valid, because I'm saying it isn't, and my argument was very valid. So, you have to prove the test is valid and the way you do that is by putting yourself to the test and passing the test right if it's a valid test you should be able to pass it somebody should be able to pass it you're saying i can't pass it that's what he's saying right off the bat well okay then prove to me that the test is legit and that you can pass it so obviously we falsified the test by changing it up a little bit and you know instead of saying uh, juxtaposing people and animals, we put people and animals on one side and plants on the other side and we say, name the trait that is absent in plants, that if it were absent in people or animals, would make it okay to kill and eat animals like you kill and eat plants, right? So what is it that these plants lack that, in other words, that animals and people have that makes it okay to eat plants, kill and eat plants, but not okay to kill and eat animals? And obviously, if you listen to vegan gains or any of these quote-unquote ethical vegans, sentience is that trait that they use. Okay, but if sentience is the trait, then kids born with anencephaly, which are kids that don't have any sentience, and dead people, for example, within your moral system that's based on the sentience, it's okay to kill and eat them. Right, which just reduced your position to absurdity. And before we even got to that, he gave a hypothetical example of how he was going to argue against me using name the trait, right? If I said intelligence is the trait, that makes it okay for us to eat animals because they're less intelligent than us. He was going to say, well, what about a retard that is just as dumb as a pig? And, you know, those people do exist. That means that within your moral framework, it's morally permissible to eat a retard, right? That's what he would have said to me, which would have, in his eyes, reduced my position to absurdity. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have because the first premise of the syllogism is humans are of moral value, right? Retarded humans, dumb humans, low intelligence humans, dead humans. Humans are of moral value, period, buddy. It wouldn't have, but we didn't get that far. But anyway, he said that that's, that's how he wins. That's how he uses name the trait to show that I'm logically inconsistent. So, well, he couldn't pass the test because according to his sentience uh, trait, well, it's okay to eat kids that aren't, that are alive and they're human, but they're not sentient, and it's okay to eat dead people. And he said that that's okay, that he doesn't care, right? <laughs> Which just reduces his position to absurdity. Of course it does, because we all know it's not okay. I don't care what kind of subjective moral system you have. If you're not a psycho that should be locked up, <laughs> you know that that's not okay. 
it just isn't okay. But he tried to wiggle out of that, that by talking about social contract and family ties and all of a sudden all these other th- traits and axioms were important. Look, if you're saying it's sentience, and I'm telling you that it's the fallacy of the single cause because it, us animals, whatever, we're a lot more than just the stupid sentience and you want trait and you want axiom. If you start, you know, when when I put you to the test, all of a sudden you realize this truth and you want to talk about, well, the sentience of the relative of the person when that wasn't, no, 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 no. It was about the sentience of the animal that's in question. It's the sentience of the plant that's in question. It's not the sentience of the plants and animals that were not eating. It's about the sentience of the plant that were eating. So he was moving the goalpost by talking about the sentience of the relatives of the child or the dead person. And then he was also sneaking in other axioms, talking about, you know, what's socially acceptable, what's not. Basically, essentially, a social contract. So, of course, he was moving the goalpost and adding adding other traits. And I wouldn't let him do that. And another thing that he couldn't answer is, because if you're saying sentience is the trait that is protective of these animals' life and, and liberty, okay, fair enough, I'll accept that. But what protects sentience? Because I take the sentience away. These animals are no longer sentient. And you can do that painlessly. It's absolutely possible to do that painlessly without affecting their sentience you take the sentience away you could kill and eat them and this goes for both animals and human beings within this moral system that he presented this moral framework of sentience being the most important thing that supposedly gives us all these rights right what protects what what keeps me from being able to take away the sentience sentience fine sentience protects life and liberty of these animals but what protects sentience if nothing if i'm not obligated to respect sentience i take the sentience away and i could kill and eat anything that's alive that's why his moral system doesn't work but he he tried to argue that well the reason why we respect sentience is because it's consciousness so basically what he said is the reason why we respect we respect sentience is because it's sentience which is complete and utter nonsense because that's circular logic and it just doesn't work that way you can't use this sort of thing it's a fallacy circular circular logic so he couldn't defend he couldn't even prove that his test is legitimate. So how, why should I be submitting myself to the test when you can't even prove that, when you can't even pass the test? It's really that simple. So after that, uh, because I had shown his logical inconsistency thrice over, which by then, I mean, surely if those are the criteria for winning the debate and I did it one, two, three times, of course I won the debate, clearly, right? Uh, so then he just, because he couldn't defend any of his points logically, uh, he, he went on the offensive and started asking me questions, which is completely fine, but you have to let me answer the question. So when he asked me if I think it's okay to torture animals, because I choose, for me, I'm team people. For me, people are come before animals my first and foremost primary reason why we shouldn't do that is because it could cause psychological problems in people and then they could take these bad habits let's say they pick up torturing animals and torture human beings right so and because human beings are more important to me than animals in general that was my first reason, but I had other reasons, and I wanted to talk about those, but he wouldn't let me, right? I wanted to talk about that, it, look, what? it's not morally okay, in my opinion. It just doesn't feel right. Like, I'm the conscious that I was given by the higher power that I have every single right to believe in, if you're going to believe in aliens. I have a lot more evidence for a higher power than you do for aliens. That's for them, sure, scientific evidence. Um, like the Cambrian explosion, right? Intelligent design, for example. I mean, I could go on and on, but the debate's not about atheism or uh, deism, an uh, ideology, a philosophy that I adhere to. Anyway, you know, 
so he just started talking over me. He wouldn't let me finish. And, you know, that got really frustrating because I wanted to be able to make my argument. You know, you can't just stop me and start nitpicking my argument without letting me finish it. And then he just kept pressing and pressing. And when I wanted to go back and recap whatever my argument was because he never let me finish, he just wouldn't let me talk anymore. He just kept saying, answer the question, answer the question, answer the... And then I just got really triggered because, look, if this is a debate, then you need to let me talk. If you're not letting me talk, then the debate is over. So basically what he did, something I'm being accused of by these clap and seal halfwit ethical vegans, is that I rage quit. No, I didn't quit. He refused to debate me anymore because if you're not allowing me to speak, then you're not allowing me to debate you. You you essentially quit the debate. And why did he get so frustrated? Because he got owned in the debate. He got absolutely spanked. He couldn't logically answer any points. His morality was invalidated. He was shown his diet was invalidated using his own arguments. And then his trick name the trade was completely and utterly invalidated. But I lost the debate. That's cute, guys. That's real cute. So, look, you don't have to, I don't have to, this is a debate. I don't have to be easy. My job is to be as difficult as possible. Do you not know what a debate is? But these vegans, they have these cookie cutter, pre-cooked arguments that only work if the debate follows exactly the certain pattern that they believe it will follow. When somebody throws them a curveball, they get lost because they can't think on their feet and all of a sudden you derailed their whole game plan. I'm not, my job debating you is not to be nice. I mean, respectful, sure, but my job isn't to, to be easy and hand you shit on the silver platter. I'm supposed to be difficult. Not dishonest, difficult. I'm supposed to make it difficult for you. Do you not understand how debates work? Jesus. <laughs> and I need to be allowed to speak. Otherwise, the debate is over. If I can't speak, I can't debate. And if I can't debate, then the debate ain't happening. This is really simple, basic, rudimentary logic. And if Vegan Gains is not allowing me to speak, he's essentially quitting the debate. He just rage quit the debate. And look, I can answer any question in any way I want to. You don't get to tell me how I need to be answering questions. After I'm done answering the question and you need to let me speak and you need to let me finish, that's when your turn comes to rebut what I just said. And if I'm being illogical or I'm not addressing the question, you're going to get your chance to say all that. But first you have to let me speak so then you can reply. Have you ever honestly seen a debate, like a legitimate debate on TV where people aren't allowed to speak, where, where the opponent is telling them that you need to answer this question in a specific manner? Have you ever seen anything like that? No, it's ridiculous. It's immature. It's childish. It means you just got your ass handed to you. And this is the only way you think you can regain control. Because you completely lost control. Your entire game plan got derailed and you just don't know what to do anymore. So you're basically not letting the other person speak. Because anytime the other person speaks, you get exposed as a fucking fraud. Duh. So, yeah, I got triggered and I got upset because I was being disrespected completely and I ain't having that. No, 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 no. I am not having that. So I gave him a piece of my mind and I told him I got a jet because you just quit the debate, punk. You're not letting me debate you anymore. Anyway... That's basically what happened. Those were the, the main points. I feel very good about uh, exposing vegan gains inconsistencies. Once again, debunking his entire diet, right? 
using his own words basically to debunk using his own words against him to get him to admit that his diet causes disease why he's been running around saying it's the healthiest diet on the planet but i lost the debate <laughs> matt damon clapped in the seals i invalidated his diet basically showing how logically inconsistent he is i obliterated his moral outlook showing how inconsistent he is in applying this morality sometimes it's subjective sometimes it's subjective and, it, and it's okay to flip-flop like that no it ain't just because no one's ever called you out on it that don't make it cool homie so i completely invalidated his morality and then i completely derailed his entire name the trait trick showing you that he himself can't even pass the test that he wants to put people to <laughs> so i feel very good about um the debate and if you have any logical arguments and you want to tell me where i went wrong in my reasoning feel free but if you're just going to start talking about my mother and calling me names and saying that i'm low iq whoo <laughs> well i mean you're just gonna get blocked troll so i look forward to logical arguments against what i just presented to you and if you don't have any well we all know why that is, don't we? Thank you all for listening. Uh, yeah. Feel very good about the debate. And um, your boy cracked. He cracked mentally. He couldn't handle the pressure. And he started acting like a chump. And quit the debate. Thanks for listening. I'm out of here. <laughs>